An estate or a station wagon, if you're American, sounds boring. Mercedes has something that should make you stand out from the shopping trolley crowd. This is the Mercedes-Benz CLA shooting brake. The CLA shooting brake is a more elegant estate based on the four-door coupe based on the A-Class hatchback. Before you bombard me with comments that coupes are only two doors and four-door cars are called sedans, let me just remind you that Mercedes offers a CLA four-door coupe and a sedan called the A-Class limousine or sedan depending on the market. I was just as confused as you are so I asked Mercedes PR here in Poland to clarify what's the difference between the CLA and the A-Class sedan or limousine. After almost a month I received a reply and here it is. I quote The CLA in terms of dimensions and offer is positioned above the A-Class limousine but below the C-Class targeting clients looking for performance, style and design uncompromising in this sphere. The A-Class limousine is a more common sense choice whereas the CLA stirs emotions with its coupe line, frameless windows, driving characteristics, chassis proportions. Yeah, right. From this one can deduce there is such a thing as a four-door coupe and it is completely different from an old boring sedan. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree. Anyway, based on this exciting coupe, there is a shooting brake, which, unlike an estate, is also very exciting. Exciting indeed, if someone likes hunting, because this is where the shooting brake takes its name from. With positioning and etymology out of the way, let's get to the important stuff. In case of this car, that would be the boot. After all, it is an estate, right? Shooting brake. And I really don't like the sound it makes here. When I reviewed the first generation CLA shooting brake back in 2015, I complained about the high loading lip and narrow boot opening. High loading lip remained, but the opening is almost 24 centimeters wider. That's more than 87 centimeters across now. Hardly headline news, but enough to transport a disassembled bed. As my neighbor pointed out, if you can transport a bed, then you can probably also sleep in it. Diagonally, but yes, one could if one really wanted to. The boot volume is now 1370 liters with the seats folded and 505 liters to the window line in a 5 seat configuration. That's 16 and 10 liters more, respectively, than in the first generation. There are a couple of shopping bag hooks in the boot and that's pretty much it. There's nowhere to store the boot cover, but at least it's easy to remove and reinstall. The seats now split 40-20-40. The CLA grew. It's almost 5 cm longer, more than 5 cm wider, and the wheelbase is also 3 cm longer. All this means there is more space inside. In the back, two adults should be fine. It's no GLE, but for an exciting compact estate, it's okay. Not great, not terrible. There are a couple of cup holders in the armrest. Like so, these Mercedes over-engineered cup holders. There is a place for water bottles in the door bins and there are two USB-C ports and two air vents. Not great, not terrible. In the front, the same dashboard which we first saw in the spring of 2018 in the current A-Class. I know some find it controversial, with the large displays, piano black plastic here and there, lack of symmetry, a weird step on the passenger side, I like it, and as far as the virtual instrument cluster is concerned, Mercedes does a brilliant job. I never have problems with finding the information I want, even if sometimes there is too much information and too many options of presenting it. But in the BMW, which I like, the virtual instrument cluster is just terrible. 
As far as the rest of the interior is concerned, besides problems with keeping it clean, I didn't find any major problems. Perhaps the smartphone cubby is a bit small, but it's not a deal breaker. Storage is sufficient, cup holders are sufficient. Yes, I've seen more practical interiors, but Mercedes wins with looks and multimedia. Speaking of multimedia, one cannot overlook the MBUX. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? What do you think about Audi? They're nice. I like seeing them through my rear view mirror. There are of course better ways to use voice commands like destination input, setting AC or ambient lighting, making phone calls, etc. Just two more things about MBUX. When navigating to your destination, you can use so-called augmented reality. Before a turn, satnav screen displays front camera view with arrows appearing on the street that you're supposed to be turning into. And when you're first at the lights, sometimes you have to bend your head to see what color the light is. That's especially a problem in the minis these days. In this case, Mercedes turns on a wide-angle camera and you can see the traffic light. It's simply clever. I like that. The Mercedes-Benz CLA shooting brake is available with a choice of petrol and diesel engines with power ranging from 116 to 225 horsepower and displacement ranging from 1.3 to 2 liters. There is no official word on the plug-in hybrid just yet, but with Mercedes announcing PHEV A and B class and some 20 new PHEVs to follow soon, it's safe to assume the CLA will be on the list as well. This is the CLA 200, which means the more powerful of the two 1.3 motors. 163 horsepower, 8.4 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour, claimed average fuel consumption of 5.5 liters per 100 km combined. These are better numbers than the old CLA 200 with a 1.6 liter engine, but fuel economy is also considerably higher than promised. I managed to get it down to about 7 liters per 100 km combined. A few days earlier I was driving a normally aspirated 1.6 Hyundai Elantra, which averaged closer to 6. Progress only on paper. Around the city, the 163 horsepower 1.3 engine is more than enough. It's torquing the lower part of the rev band. You don't need to press the gas pedal too hard to speed up. Unless, of course, you want to take off quickly, then there is a slight delay. This is a problem in most small turbocharged engines. Outside the city, it's a different story because brisk maneuvers at speed require pressing the pedal to the metal. And I'm not talking just about overtaking on a road like this, but also on the motorway when you want to overtake and not block others in the left lane. But let's assume you don't live in Poland and you stick to the legal speed limit. Then the CLA 200 is perfect. At motorway speeds, you've got about 3000 revs on the clock in seventh gear. It's not tiring and the car has decent soundproofing. The ride has also improved. The previous CLA shooting brake, even on 18-inch wheels, felt too jittery. Here we have 19-inch wheels and I don't feel any discomfort even on cobblestones. In the front there are hydro mounts and in the back there is acoustic control arms which improve ride comfort. The sound is still nothing to write home about regardless of the drive mode you're in and I still can't tell if there is any real difference between the sport mode and comfort mode. To me the CLA 200 feels exactly the same regardless of the mode it's in. On the plus side the hard to find mode button has been changed to a rocker which is next to the touchpad. The handling, it's okay. Obviously, this is no AMG 35, so don't expect to be all wet behind the wheel. The steering could be a tad more direct and the car could be a bit more neutral through tighter bands, but this is not a model people will try racing. At least, I hope they won't be. Visibility, let's face it, it's a shooting brake, so visibility was and is bad, but over the years more cars have bad visibility, so the CLA no longer stands out.
I remember when the previous A-Class hit the market, it was one of the few compact cars with advanced driver aids. Today, adaptive cruise control is nothing extraordinary in the compact segment, but Mercedes promises semi-autonomous driving, which means adaptive cruise control works together with active lane assist. Moreover, the cruise control is integrated with SatNav, so the car can slow down before a planned maneuver, and direction from Google Maps in Android Auto can be displayed on the virtual instrument cluster as well as on the HUD. As far as I know, only Honda displays Android Auto directions in the instrument cluster. Mercedes-Benz CLA shooting brake prices start at €32,000 for the 180 version with a 136 horsepower 1.3 petrol engine and a manual gearbox. Yes, you can still get a CLA with a manual shifter, but only the base engine versions. The CLA 200 with 163 horsepower 1.3 motor starts at €36,000, but with options this test car costs around €55,000. The Mercedes-Benz CLA shooting brake is a nicer estate. It's hardly the cat's whiskers, but it's practical and visually pleasant enough to convince you that yes, you can buy a premium compact estate. Anyway, in this segment, you don't really have another choice. And do you like the shooting brake body style? And is it worth paying the premium price? There is Kia Proceed, isn't there? And then there are regular estates, which may be more practical, more value for money. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe, rate and share. New reviews every Friday. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.